Hey everyone, so in today's video, I am going to show you how I refresh my raised beds every year for planting. And this is probably one of the questions I get asked the most is, do I empty out my raised beds, all of the soil, and put fresh potting soil in every year? And absolutely not. I don't even know how I would do that because, again, I don't have a yard to like spread old potting soil into. We're three stories up. The soil is very heavy, so even the thought of having to carry it down every year and bring all that fresh soil back up gives me anxiety. I also get anxiety when I think about whenever we move from here, which hopefully will be a very long ways away, clearing out the garden, but I'll worry about that when it gets here. So in terms of refreshing my raised beds, I'll show you what I do, and it's something I've done every year, and the soil in my raised beds has produced really good quality crops every year. And I'm taking a horticulture class, my first one for my certification, and I asked my professor what she recommended and she said almost the exact same thing that I've been doing. So that made me feel really good that I kind of know a little bit about gardening. Um, so I do this once a year, typically between the spring growing season when I plant my cool weather crops and then going into the warm season where we're at right now where I'm going to be planting all of my summer crops. Now I don't, refresh the raised beds before spring because, well, one, I have tulips in a lot of the beds, so those were planted in fall. I don't want to do anything until I've removed the tulips. And the second reason is that the spring weather doesn't always cooperate to have good harvests anyway. And some of the stuff that I'm adding, like the compost and the perlite, I mean, it's not super expensive, but it's also not super cheap. And I don't want to waste that on a crop that might not necessarily even do well. Um, but the summer crops are going to be in there for, let's see, May, June, July, August, September, part of October, about six months. So that's why I want to make sure the raised beds are fully refreshed for them. So let me talk about what I do and why. So there are really two main issues that I'm addressing when I am refreshing my raised beds for the season. The first is the depletion of nutrients. So obviously as you're growing things in a limited amount of potting soil, those plants are going to absorb a lot of the nutrients out of the potting soil. So I need to make sure I add that back in. Um, and I do that by adding compost. And I've used a ton of different types of compost. What I'm going to do today is use the Purple Cow Activated Compost. I'll show you the bag in just a second. It's too heavy for me to lift up here. Um, but I just spread an inch thick layer on top and then work that into the soil. That's also what the bag recommends, one to two inches. So that's what I do for nutrients right now. I also will add like granular fertilizer and then liquid fertilizer throughout the season. So usually some sort of granular fertilizer when I actually plant my plants. And then the liquid fertilizer, usually I'd say on a weekly basis throughout the growing season. The other issue I'm addressing is that I find the potting soil tends to become very compact in my raised bed, especially at the bottom of the raised bed. So to address that, I dig through the soil just to make sure I'm breaking up anything where it's become compact because your roots of your plants need oxygen. So I need to make sure there is some aeration in my soil and good drainage so that I don't get root rot. Um, so I break up the soil first, then I'm also going to add in some perlite. Now you can add in anything that can improve the drainage. I like perlite because it's lightweight, so it's very easy to get up here. So that's really what I do. There's not a ton that I put into the raised bed, but I find that this works really well. Again, this will be my fourth, third or fourth spring doing this. And the soil in my raised bed has been the same soil that's been in there since 2020. I just keep adding and amending it as I go along. Now I'm also, going to add in some extra worm castings. I think there are some worm castings in the compost, but I got a bag of this, so I figured I'd add in a little bit as well. Um, this one, I think it says about an inch too, but I'm not going to, because that would be more than one bag. I think I'm just going to sprinkle some throughout the raised bed. The perlite, I'm going to add just about a handful per, per square foot. That seems to work really well. So let me show you the compost that I'm using and then we will get to work on the raised bed. I'm just going to do one today because it's the only one that is sort of empty for the growing season, but this is the same process that I'll use for all of my raised beds. So here's the compost I'm using. Again, this is the Purple Cow Activated Compost. 
it says here it's derived from compost, yard trimmings, worm castings, kelp meal, bone meal, rock phosphate, and volcanic ash. So maybe I won't add any extra worm castings. I don't know. We'll see how it goes. Um, but this is what I'm going to be adding. And it does have instructions here for different situations. So garden beds, which is what I'm doing. Improving topsoil. Bolstering trees and shrubs. Potted plants. Indoor and outdoor. Oh, which reminds me, I need to add some to some of my indoor plants soon. Um, lawn repair, maintaining existing lawns, perennial beds, and mulch. And this is the raised bed I'm going to be refreshing. Now, should I have already planted my super tunias? Absolutely not. Did I? Because the tulips didn't do that great and I needed some color in here. Yes, I did. So I'm just going to gently work around them there in the middle. I did remove my tulips from here. I still have to remove them from the back. So I'll make a whole video on what I do with those tulips. Same thing I did last year, now that I know that it works. Also, something that I think surprised me as I started gardening is when I pull the plants, I always expect a lot more soil to come out. But you can see here, it's still almost to the top of the raised bed there. So I am going to remove a little bit of the potting soil in here and then go ahead and kind of do my whole refreshing process. Now there's two things that I'll do with the old soil. I'll either put it in like the bottom of empty containers. So what I'm gonna do today is fill maybe about half of a seven gallon grow bag, a couple seven gallon grow bags with the soil. And then I put fresh compost or fresh potting soil in the other half, or I'll add some of it to my tumbler composter as kind of like a starter for the compost, which I did emptied out into one of the raised beds back there. So it's actually empty right now and ready to be filled up for this year. Um, but first let's go ahead and I will empty out some of this soil and then we'll get to the rest of the process. All right, next step is to take my little garden fork or hand cultivator, which I think I said garden trowel earlier, which obviously this is not, um, but I'm gonna then rake through all the soil all the way to the bottom of the raised bed. And these are just about a foot deep. Here's what we look like now. So the soil is definitely much fluffier. I had to use a little bit of force as I got further down to the bottom of the bed to break up that soil, but I basically put, I would dig a hole. Well, first I got everything kind of light and fluffy, then I dug a hole, put some perlite into each of the holes, mixed it around so there's perlite throughout, and then just added some more to the top of the bed. Last step then is to put in an inch thick layer of compost and then mix that into like the top half of the raised bed.
compost is mixed in and the bed is all ready for my summer planting. I did add in the compost, raked it around, and then I also sprinkled some of the worm castings around each of the super tunias to say, I am sorry for planting you before I amended the bed. But that is it. Pretty easy, pretty simple. I'll do the same thing to this raised bed over on the left, um, these three grow bags. This bed on the right has my native plants, which some are perennial, some are annual. So I'll probably just spread compost on the top and like rake it in around the plants. And then this one I will be also completely emptying out. So I'll do the same thing that I just did to the center bed. So I'm back inside now to enjoy the air conditioning. I was not prepared to be as hot as I was already in early May out there, um, but I think we're cooling down a little bit, then the heat is picking right back up. But yeah, that's basically everything I do. Like I said, this will be, I guess the third year that I'm refreshing because it's my fourth year of gardening. So far I haven't lost anything. The only time I will completely replace soil is if there's some sort of fungal issue, which I've had in some smaller pots haven't had an raised bed yet, so fingers crossed that doesn't happen. That's the only time I completely change out the soil. And again, I've never had any issues with growing anything, but maybe, I mean, it's been, let's see, four years of gardening. I don't know if it'll be different in 10 years of gardening, but we'll have to wait and see. Uh, let me know if you have any other questions or if there's anything else that you add to your containers. Um, and I will see you in the next video. And pretty soon I'll be putting in the zinnias out there. Uh, so thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time. Bye.